So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining this session. This session is 5AE and it's the subject is automating your IBM Z environment with Red Hat Ansible, which will be presented by Dan. Um, the way we are going to do this is any questions that you may have throughout the presentation, please raise them in the chat box and then Dan at the back end of, of his session, he will answer uh, those same questions. So Dan, the, fla the, the floor is yours. All right, thank you very much, appreciate it. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, this is actually my first GSC UK, so I'm definitely excited to be here. I'm um, excited to be presenting um, Ansible for IBM Z to you all today. Uh, my name is Dan Jast. I am one of the product managers here at IBM covering our Ansible for IBM Z work that we have ongoing. Um, there's been a lot of exciting things happening in the last 18 months in this space, so I'm definitely excited to be here to share um, the progress that we've been making um, with you all here today. Um, as, as mentioned, you know, if you have any questions, you can feel free to throw those in the chat. Um, I'll definitely be looking at it throughout the session, but I will probably look to answer most of those towards the tail end of the session. So um, definitely feel free to throw your questions out there. Um, real quick, seems like there's a charity raffle going on, so make sure to go, go check that out. Just wanted to call that out too. But with that, um, let's jump right into it. And I, I, you know, I kind of just wanted to start at a bit of a higher level overview for us all here to make sure we're all on the same page and kind of all have the same level of understanding about the Ansible automation platform. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with the Ansible automation platform, this is kind of a nice graphic here that gives a nice big overview of, of all the kind of pieces that make up this, this automation platform. Um, so Ansible, if you're not aware, it's, it really is the mo one of the most, if not the most popular automation platform in the industry today. Um, in 2019, it was the number uh, four most contributed to GitHub pro project out there in the open source communities. Um, and in, in 2020, it was the number seven most downloaded Python package available as well. So, you know, this is an extremely popular automation platform. Um, it runs on basically every different type of, you know, platform that's available today to our customers to, you know, from an infrastructure perspective and operating system perspective. Um, and, and it's a, you know, it's current penetration in the marketplace is incredible. And that's really why from an IBM perspective, we really saw a, a really great benefit here and opportunity to extend this to work with ZOS and, and our IBM Z systems as well, right? To really start standardizing the way we can automate across the enterprise and really just looking at ZOS or Linux on Z or any of our you know, Z operating systems here. It's just another uh, system or another operating system in our enterprise that we're automating and managing with Ansible. Um, so there's a huge open source community that backs the Ansible automation platform. As I mentioned, it was you know, it contributed to a ton in, uh, in 2019 and 2020 and continuing onwards. Um, and really from our perspective, from IBM's perspective on what we've been contributing to here with the Ansible automation platform is within this Ansible engine space. Um, so the Ansible engine, this is how you build out your, your scripts or in Ansible terminology, we call these things playbooks. Um, so you know, these playbooks are comprised of multiple tasks that we're piecing together to, you know, automate, you know, some type of use case of, of interest to ourselves. Um, and from an IBM perspective, we are contributing kind of the foundational building blocks to the Ansible engine to allow you to automate different processes on ZOS. So we have many different collections out in the Ansible community that allow you to automate, you know, specifically the ZOS operating system, like data set operations, job submissions, stuff like that or you know, more specific collections for IBM middleware, such as Kix or IMS, um, and, and you know, more coming in the future as well there. And I'll get into all of that in a second here. Um, but that's kind of where we're contributing content to in this space at this point. Um, up above that, we have Ansible Tower, and Ansible Tower is kind of that graphical user interface management um, system that you kind of can manage all of your automation happening across the enterprise with. Um, so Ansible Tower provides a lot of great, um, you know, uh, features in the form of you can have user IDs assigned to Ansible Tower with different roles and permissions. So you can distribute your different automation across your enterprise to the specific roles that should have access to those playbooks. Um, it, it also, you know, it gives you a very nice holistic view of all of that automation happening across the enterprise. Um, so, you know, if anything did fail, you have a nice good view of, of where that's failed and where you can kick off additional automation to fix those failures. 
And then lastly, in the top section there, um, with the Ansible hosted services, really from our perspective, where we're focused here is we understand that when we're talking to mainframe customers, um, there, there is an expectation for some level of enterprise level support for any content available in the community, right? We have mission critical workloads and mission critical applications that are running on our systems. And, you know, we expect levels of support to be able to support that to make sure that things are running as expected. Um, and there is a support agreement with Red Hat and IBM that if you are a licensed owner, for the Ansible automation platform that you can get support for the IBM content um, that we've contributed to the Ansible um, ecosystem here. And I'll go into all of that much more in a second here when I get into the collections on the next slide. So let's get into these collections. So if you're unfamiliar with what a collection is in, in Ansible ecosystem here, this is really kind of a, um, it's a grouping of content tailored to a specific technology or use case. Um, so, you know, out in the ecosystem today, there's specific collections for, um, you know, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, ServiceNow, um, you know, VMware, right? There's a lot of different collections for a lot of those more specific technologies um, that the community has been using very heavily on the distributed side of the house. And that's kind of what we're looking to do from a IBM Z and ZOS perspective is start providing some of those specific collections that we can provide to really start laying out that foundation for enabling Ansible automation for our platform. Um, and really how we're delivering this content is, first of all, we're doing all of the development for all of this out in the open source community. So it all starts on GitHub from each of these collections here, you can actually access the respective repository for those collections. Um, that's where we suggest customers go and raise issues if they ever find a bug with one of our modules, or if they want a feature enhancement within one of the collections, go out there to the GitHub repository. We have um, you know, pull request uh, templates for all the different types of requests you can make against our collections. Um, and that's a great way to provide our development teams, you know, pretty direct feedback there on what you're looking for in our collections or any, you know, enhancements or bugs that you want to report there as well. Um, once we kind of develop these collections out in the open source on GitHub, we then publish these collections out into Ansible Galaxy, which is actually where this screen grab on the right hand side of this chart is from. Um, and that really serves as kind of the community repository of Ansible content. Um, this is all, you know, open source still. Um, there's no support agreement behind this specific, you know, collection release that's going to go out into Ansible Galaxy. Um, but what's really nice and what we kind of do from an IBM perspective here is this is kind of how we roll out our beta releases of our collections. So, you know, we do our, our open source development, we publish to Ansible Galaxy, we get that community feedback, right, if there's any bugs or feature enhancements we won't put into some of the, the content here. And then once we feel conf um, confident and comfortable with those um, you know, beta releases that we put out into Ansible Galaxy into that community repository, that's when we certify and support our collections and get that enterprise level support for um, the content being released here. And we host that in Ansible Automation Hub, which is what the stars uh, signify here on this chart. Um, so five of these collections today are certified and supported and to access that Automation Hub library of content, um, you do, it does require a license with the Ansible Automation platform through Red Hat. Um, so that's kind of how we are, our, our content kind of goes through the flow and how you kind of uh, get enterprise level support. Um, I will say many customers use the open source distributions here, um, especially as they're kind of exploring the beginning, you know, stages of POC and, and you know, exploratory type work with Ansible. Um, the open source, you know, offerings are definitely a good, good option for, for that kind of beginning work there. But going down the list here of collections, just to kind of speak through these quickly. Um, first, we have the IBM Z system automation collection. So if you're familiar with the IBM Z system automation product from, um, from IBM here, it's a policy-based automation product. Um, and this specific collection is all about the creation and, de and deletion of dynamic resources, which are a, a feature of the system automation product itself. Um, so this is a pretty cool collection because you know, Ansible being agentless and not having anything running on ZOS itself, um, you know, system automation, having an agent that's running on ZOS and kind of in having uh, information being ingested from the operating system, you know, allows Ansible to kind of have quicker responses and be more reactive per se to different events happening on the system by working with system automation here. Um, next, we have the ZOS core collection. This was our first collection dropped back in um, the end or end of March, beginning of April of 2020. 
Um, so about 18 months ago now. Um, and this collection um, is, is, is basically our main collection here. This is the collection providing the majority of the building blocks for the ZOS operating system. So data set operations, job submissions, TSO operator commands, all of those good features that you would expect from, you know, uh, you know whether you may be using ZOSMF REST APIs today for or Zoe CLI commands for, right? That's really what, what we're delivering here via the ZOS core collection. Um, this has also been our collection by far adopted the most um, by our customers in, in the last 18 months um, with over 50,000 downloads now on Ansible Galaxy um, in the last 18 months since we dropped this collection, just to give you a feel for how much adoption we're seeing here in this uh, with this collection. I'll share many use cases that we're seeing with our customers um, around this collection as well very shortly. Next, we have the ZOSMF collection. So this connect collection is actually connecting into the REST interface for ZOSMF and specifically for the plugins for workflows and cloud provisioning and management. So if you're you know, using ZOSMF workflows for automation today, or you're you know, automating provisioning with cloud provisioning and management with ZOSMF, now you can orchestrate that automation um, with Ansible. So you know, one of the stories I'm always telling here when I give this pitch is, I'm not telling anyone on this call to throw out their JCL or their Rex or their ZOSMF workflows, right? Keep using all that automation, but look to orchestrate that or tie that into your wider automation strategies with something like an Ansible. Um, and that's definitely something that the ZOSMF collection is enabling today. Um, then we have the Kix collection. This is connecting into the CMCI REST interface for Kix. Um, and pretty much anything you can do against CMCI with Kix, you can do with this collection here. Um, and I will call out that there is a presentation coming up later in the GSE conference by Stu Francis of the Kix team. Um, and he'll be going much more in depth into the Kix collection and some of the use cases there I'm experiencing there. So I have a, a list at the end of my uh, presentation here of all the other Ansible for IBM Z sessions happening at the GSE UK here. Um, next, we have the ZOS IMS collection. Um, second collection that we had launched as a part of our offering and Bryant Pinyarchin, who I see in the attendance list here, um, is actually the lead architect across that collection here. Um, but IMS, very similar to Kix, right? It's our other big transaction manager on ZOS and this collection is providing a lot of the foundational building blocks um, to work with against your IMS regions and your IMS DBs and, and the rest of the different IMS resources you may be working with there. Um, and then lastly, our last collection that's currently available today is the hardware management console collection. So I always get excited when I talk about this collection because this is the only collection that's not specific to ZOS today. Um, this collection is actually, you know, at the hardware management console level. So how we're managing LPARs and LPAR resources, right? We have certain internal teams within IBM looking at automating IPL processes um, with this current collection. Um, I will call out that this current collection is supporting the dynamic, uh, the DPM mode on the hardware management console. So this is more specific today to uh, Linux on Z type systems, but we're definitely looking at a future release in the future here um, to enable more on the ZOS um, LPAR side as well. So these are our six collections available, five of which are on Automation Hub today. We definitely have more planned for the future. Um, and I will hint at some of that um, on my next slide that I'll touch on right now. So um, as we kind of look across the ecosystem and the IBM Z portfolio, um, there's many different technologies that you, know, you can work with Ansible for. And really what I wanna get across here on this slide is you'll see a bunch of different technologies listed here that I actually didn't list on the previous chart for that we, that we had specific collections for. Um, and that's kind of my big message that I always wanna get across on this chart here is that you know, when you're looking at automating with Ansible and you're looking to get started here, don't limit yourself when it comes to use cases and technologies for only what collection support today. Um, because with the current collection um, content that we have today and all the content that works straight out of the box just with the Ansible engine itself, um, there really is a ton that we can work against on ZOS and, and even Linux on Z today. Um, so for example, kind of what I'm, you know, what I'm alluding to with that when I say that here, um, is one module that comes straight out of the box with Ansible Engine itself is this module called the URI module. And that module lets you interact with any REST or SOAP APIs that are running you know, on ZOS or any other type of system, right? So when you see things like ZOS Connect or MQ or DB2 listed on this chart, right? 
all of those different products have a REST interface that then with that URI module, we can interact with. And one resource that I'm gonna call out later in the deck here is um, a resource that, I, that we call the Ansible for IBM Z Sample Playbook Repository. And that's kind of a collection of, of uh, playbooks that we're hosting in GitHub. Um, and that collection um, of, of playbooks there shows many use cases leveraging that URI module calling against different REST interfaces on ZOS today. So really anything from our IBM portfolio that has a REST or SOAP interface and any other vendor that you may be you know, uh, leveraging software from as well, whether it's Broadcom or Rocket or any others, um, right? If, the, if it supports a REST interface, we can automate against that with Ansible. So that's definitely one way that, you know, that spans beyond just the specific collection content here. Um, the other way is leveraging some of the content being delivered in these actual collections, like this EOS core collection, um, to automate against other products. So a really good example I always call out here is RACF, right? We didn't have a specific collection called out today for our security product from IBM, RACF, but we do have the ZOS core collection that leverages, that lets us uh, issue TSO commands or lets us run jobs or even or directly MBS programs um, directly against the op operating system themselves, right? So with that TSO command, um, you know, module, we're able to, you know, execute any type of RACF or ACF2 or top secret type commands, right? And we have uh, many use cases in our sample playbook repository showing that as well. Um, so that's my big, you know, my big pitch that I always go through on this chart here is definitely don't limit yourself for what you can automate um, with just the collections provided because we, we really can do a lot with the content that's available today. So looking towards the future a little bit here on where we're heading, because I always like to give us some hints into our roadmap and kind of what some of the content that's coming next. Um, so I, I called out here on the right side of this chart, we have the broker. Um, so this is the IBM ZOS cloud broker, which recently put out a statement of direction saying that they are now extending some of the framework for the ZOS um, cloud broker to now in addition to being able to execute um, ZOSMF cloud provisioning and management templates for some of the automated provisioning capabilities there. Um, we're also extending that now to also be able to execute um, Ansible playbooks as a part of the operator framework running inside of OpenShift there. Um, so this really extends the capabilities of what the broker can do from an automation perspective by, you know, also allowing for Ansible playbooks to serve as some of that foundational automation um, that we're kicking off from an OpenShift type of environment and is definitely more um, more information to come in that space in the near future. Um, and then lastly, from a collection perspective, I'll definitely call out that we're talking to a couple storage related teams now on the IBM Z side. And, um, you know, definitely uh, follow me on LinkedIn or join the Ansible for IBM Z community to, uh, to read those announcements very soon when uh, I have more information to share there. Um, but definitely that storage space around ZOS and IBM Z is, is where you can expect some content to be coming next there. Okay, so how are some of our customers using Ansible today on ZOS in the mainframe? So these are kind of our six main areas that we've seen a lot of customer interest in today. Um, now, what I will say is we don't have official customer references at this point. We're still working on getting some of those, but behind the scenes, there is a customer name linked to every single one of these um, that, you, that you can see here. Um, so first of all, you know, I'm going to call out some of the more popular ones that, that um, I've seen, at least the, probably the top three that I've seen in, in the short term here. Um, number one is definitely in that security automation space with SSL certification renewals. Um, this has been by far our most popular use case that we've seen. We have many customers that are looking to standardize the way that they're automating their certificate renewal process across the enterprise. And a lot of security personnel in our customer sites are looking to really not have a different process on Z than they do on the distributed side. And a lot of people on the distributed side are leveraging an external CA called Benefy. So now with some of the Ansible content available for Venify and the ZOS core collection that we have to work against the security products, we can pretty much standardize the, um, you know, the playbooks that are running on the distributed side to automate the certification renewal there and now kind of completely standardize that on the Z side as well. And uh, we've gotten a lot of interest there and we are releasing some playbooks to our repository soon um, to help our community get started on this use case as well. So definitely look out for those announcements coming soon there. 
Um, number two from a use case perspective has definitely been in the provisioning and maintenance space. We have a lot of customers looking at automating, you know, different SMPE type tasks, um, whether that's applying PTFs or running certain maintenance against their different software or middleware running on ZOS, as well as looking to automate the provisioning of different, you know, middleware or software on their systems as well. And I will show a customer example, an anonymous customer example here shortly um, of a customer who's using that in production actually today. The last one I want to call out here on this chart is really more of a low hanging fruit example that a lot of our customers are getting started with early on, but it's still very powerful. And, and that kind of goes back to my message before that we're not telling you to get rid of any of your existing automation, right? Keep using that current JCL, keep, keep using that Rex, but start looking to call that in a more modern way through something like an Ansible to really tie that into your wider, you know, wider automation strategies for your enterprise. And that's really in that orchestration space, right? So whether it's, um, you know, Rex, JCL, you know, ZOSMF workflows, Zoe CLI scripts or commands, um, and anything else you really may be using from an automation perspective today, um, that's all really candidates for orchestration um, from an Ansible perspective. And that's definitely a, you know, a nice space to look at for tying in, you know, to, the, to those wider, you know, automation strategies within your enterprise there. Um, all these other areas, you know, there's definitely a lot of interest in those as well. Um, but I'd say those three that I just mentioned today um, are the top three that I've been hearing from our customers in the last 18 months or so. So let's get into a couple specific customer examples before I get into a little bit of how, you know, our, our suggested adoption track per se um, that, that, I, that I kind of throw out to our customers. And then I did want to hop out onto the web and show some of this content to help you all get started if you do want to explore some of this content in your own time. So first of all, this is a large shipping and mailing service that we work with, um, you know, it's a big IBM Z customer here. Um, this customer um, was actually, a, this is a pretty cool story because they were actually um, mandated by their management team to be onboarded onto their company-wide Ansible automation strategy, right? So they've already been, um, this company's already been leveraging Ansible on the distributed side of the house. Um, and really the management wanted that to be standardized across the entire enterprise. And they didn't want Z to be sitting on its own little island. Um, so this team was mandated to get onboarded. So they've been actually onboarded onto the company-wide Ansible environment. So they actually don't manage any of that themselves. That's managed by the Ansible automation team. And now they are just kind of users of that environment, um, which is a really great thing because they don't have to worry about managing any of the distributed side system resources there. It's really just focusing on the automation that they're building to automate against their ZOS systems here. And kind of, they're starting, you know, pretty small, right? They're starting with some small playbooks to do some very specific tasks. So one of those specific tasks that they're doing, um, which is the first thing they had running in production, this customer, is they have a playbook that goes out and pings every single one of their ZOS systems every single morning and does a couple different verification checks to, to make sure that the different resources necessary on those systems are online. Um, then sends a nice report back to the head system programmer on that team to make sure that everything's running as expected that day. And if not, then they could respond quickly in you know, that morning when he gets into the office and checks his email um, to see if anything is, is, uh, is happening there. Um, they are leveraging a bunch of the, uh, the ZOS core collection modules there, as you can see, and those are some of the use cases they're looking at with those core modules. Um, that ZOS MBS raw module is a pretty cool module in that that lets you run JCL programs directly, right? So if you're, you know, if you, you would normally be writing a, you know, a, a JCL member to run the ID cams type program, but now in YAML syntax straight in our playbooks, we can actually um, define, you know, those programs and all the different DDs and all that good stuff that we would normally specify in our JCL members. Um, and call that directly in our playbooks in YAML syntax. So it's a kind of a new way of running MBS programs. Um, and they're doing, you know, a bunch of vSAM repos with ID cams, um, you know, for that, uh, for, with that module there. So that's just a cool one I like to call out with this customer. The next customer um, is a big managed service provider on the IBM Z side. And this customer has seen a ton of improvements in, in, in their, uh, you know, agility uh, from, from, their, from their automation perspective, but also from a skills perspective in that this customer is actually um, leveraging a lot of the automation team. So not a Z specific automation team, just the company wide automation team who already had Ansible skill. And they're now teaming with the system programmers 
to build out some of this automation. And some of this has saved them incredible time. And this actual um, kicks um, IVP process that they've uh, created some charts for here that I'm able to show today. Um, they've actually accelerated from two hours to I think it's 20 minutes, I think it's gone it's gone down from. So when they're, you know, customers that they're managing kicks environments for request a new kicks region or, you know, a new kicks environment, um, you know, in the past that took a, a while to turn around and now they're seeing that turnaround in time is pretty much like a 20 minutes in, a, in comparison to two hours. So, uh, you know, there's a bunch of different processes with the kicks collection and also the ZOS core collection that they're doing here um, to, to provision those kicks regions, you know, uh, check some of the details about the environments and, uh, you know, provide that to the end user in the, in the long run. So a lot of great work happening here. This is also out in production with this customer today. So um, we do have a bunch of customers that are starting to roll this, uh, this, this automation into production. So definitely an exciting, exciting place there. Okay, how am I I'm just checking my time? I'm all right, I got half an hour left. Sweet. So I think at this point, I did want to hop out to the web really quick um, and just show some of the content that I've been speaking of and just share some of the resources. Um, so here I am on Ansible Galaxy. Um, Ansible Galaxy, as I mentioned, this is the community repository of Ansible content and where you can find our collections out in the marketplace today. Um, so when you come out here, you know, I'm specifically in the IBM organization here, so I'm kind of filtered into the IBM specific collections. Um, but if you kind of go into this search menu here, this is where you can find any of the collections across any of the organizations who have contributed to the Ansible ecosystem here. So this is where you can find, you know, Amazon, you know, Microsoft, all the other big technology companies um, collections as well. Um, but as you hop, kind of scroll down here, you'll see all the ones that are highlighted with an IBM underscore Z or IBM underscore ZOS. And those are all of our specific collections that we've contributed to the community today. So I'll hop into the ZOS core collection um, since this is the collection that I most uh, popularly work with myself. Um, and there's a bunch of great resources right here in the front. So let's look at some of these. So first of all, if you are looking to install this collection yourself and play around with this, you can come right into here in the installation command section. So once you install the Ansible engine, um, that comes with the Ansible Galaxy command that you can then use to install this, this collection. So you copy this out right with the button there, paste that into your command line interface and very simply install your collection. Um, I also mentioned how on each collections um, kind of on each collections page here, you also are linked to the respective GitHub repos repository. Um, so when you hit the repo button there, you then get brought into the ZOS cores um, specific uh, GitHub repository here. And this is where you can hop into the issues, right? See some of the different bugs that have been opened up against the collection or even from a pull request perspective where some of the customers are asking for enhancements on some of the modules as well and how we can prioritize those and get those into our roadmap. So this is definitely helps our development team out a lot in prioritization as we look to what we're gonna be delivering in, in our quarters coming up. But the real best uh, thing I do wanna call out that you can find uh, linked from these here is when you go to the content um, section. This is where you can start seeing the list of the modules and the different features that are packed into our collections here, right? So the, here's that MBS raw module I was talking about before that lets you run a ZOS MBS program. Um, here's the data set module lets you do CRUD operations against data sets on ZOS. But this doesn't really provide you much details about these modules, right? And that's where our documentation and more specifically the standards and documentation that Ansible delivers really goes above and beyond probably what some of us are used to on the ZOS side. So when we come into this ZOS core section here um, and we hop into the module section, here's a list of all of these modules here. And I'm gonna hop into a simple one just to kind of speak towards which is the TSO command module. Um, but when we come in here, we get a couple of different sections. First of all, we get the synopsis, um, which kind of gives you a summary of what that module can do. Then we get the different parameters that you can specify as a part of that, that module in YAML syntax here. So for this module, it's very simple, right? It's TSO command module. The only thing that we really need to specify is, is the TSO commands. That's the only parameter that we have for this module. Um, and then you can see, and this is the best part about this is in the example section, um, this, these are specific examples for these um, modules that you can literally copy out of here, paste into your playbooks, customize for your own use and get started pretty quickly with some of these modules. Um, 
So this example section is really what I want to call out here is a really great resource to help anyone, you know, if you're interested in getting started, um, come over here, copy these out, customize them for your own use, um, you know, and, and get started pretty quickly. Um, so this is a pretty simple example. You know, I'll, I'll hop into the data set module really quickly just to show you some more complex ones, right? Where here we have examples across many different types of, of the data sets that we can work with um, on ZOS today. Right, so this is a, a module ex explaining how we can create a sequential data set. Here's more of a PDS type data set, right? This is showing some more of the item potency and feature rich capabilities that Ansible brings in, brings to the table here with having the ability to replace, um, you know, or, or check different features on the system today um, to make sure that we're making the right changes to our system as well. So this is definitely a great resource um, to, to, uh, to check out if you're looking to get started with Ansible here. And then the last thing I'll call out, which I also have a dedicated slide for in a second here, is the sample playbook repository that I've alluded to a couple of times already. So this playbook repository hosts a bunch of different playbooks, um, spanning a bunch of different use cases and technologies. So we have playbooks straight from the basics of creating data sets or submitting jobs, um, all the way up to provisioning OpenShift on Z, right? So we have playbooks that span really, really wide use cases. Um, we've had these contributed across multiple teams and these show a lot of those um, capabilities that span beyond our collections, right? So we have, you know, playbooks dedicated for ZOS Connect and deploying new or provisioning new ZOS Connect subsystems. Um, there's a lot of different playbooks across MQ, I know in here as well, down here and working with your queues. Um, you know, and a specific playbook showing some of the ZOS core collection capabilities working against the SMPE interfaces, right? So really great starting point for a lot of our customers looking to get started. Come check out some of the pre-written playbooks that are sitting here waiting for you to customize and start using yourselves instead of kind of, you know, creating all these from the ground up. I think this will help save you a lot of different time. And I will also point out that we have some blogs and uh, playbacks and videos here linked here as well that show some of these playbooks in action in, in demo forms. And um, I will also call out that Brian Penyarchin also that I called out before, who's the architect of IMS collection, but also one of the architects across the entire Ansible for IBM Z um, offering here at IBM. He has a session later in the, in the week here um, as well, where he'll be showing some of the demos across some of these playbooks as well. So, and if you want more of those demos, definitely look out for his session. And I will call that out in my last slide as I continue moving through the deck here in a second. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show on the web. So hopping back to the presentation, let's continue. So how do we suggest to get started for a lot of our customers on the Z side? So step one, we have a Z trial out there. So if you're unfamiliar with the Z trial program, um, this is a free you know, environment to request. It's a virtual desktop that you get access to with pre-written playbooks available for you. Um, so you go out there, you can request your own play, you know, uh, you request your environment, you have access to that for five days for free. Um, there's three pre-written scenarios for you to review the playbooks, execute them as against the ZOS systems and kind of get some of the, uh, the feedback um, to, to review the changes on the systems as well here. So this is a really great way to get your first hands-on experience with Ansible if you've never been able to experience that and more specifically with some of the ZOS core collection modules um, that these uh, scenarios here are leveraging as well. Then this is where, uh, this is more of an optional step, you know, in some cases here, because um, in most cases we see that at many customer sites, there is an existing Ansible automation platform license in place. It's just probably not being leveraged on the Z side today, right? It's being leveraged on distributed or the networking side of the house. Um, and now with some of the content that we're providing to the community, we really can, you know, we really are enabling this to work on the Z side as well. Um, so. What I always say here is, you know, first check to see if you have an existing automation platform license, because then it's really a, a, a story around extending that license to support more of our, our nodes, which is really our Z systems that we're trying to manage with Ansible as well here. Um, but if we don't have an existing automation platform license, there is this free trial from Red Hat to really get the full feature rich, um, full stack of the Ansible automation platform here um, to try out for up to, you know, I think it's 60 days, but I've heard you can extend that as well. Um, can support up to 100 managed nodes too. So it's a pretty wide footprint that you can support with this trial. Um, and this really allows you to get that hands-on experience with the Z trial. And now you get the full-blown Ansible automation platform to try out you know, with your own systems and really start getting a hands-on experience as well here. 
And then lastly, you know, I think we all kind of probably thought this one was coming. Um, the sample playbook repository, right? Now you have that trial environment. You have some hands-on experience with the Z trial as well when working with Z and Ansible. Um, take our pre-written playbooks, start customizing them to work with your systems and rolling out with those um, for your own, uh, you know, automation in your enterprise. I will also call out here that we have open sourced this sample playbook repository and are accepting contributions. So if you are building out your own Ansible automation, you know, we're really trying to collect a lot of that stuff here so we can really provide a lot of capabilities to the community, right? And, and if you're familiar with the distributed side of the house and more of the open communities and open technology there, um, you know, there's so much content out in the, on the web and in, you know, Stack Overflow and in GitHub that, you know, you're never really building your own playbooks from scratch on the distributed side of the house. Because if you Google, you know, Cisco networking automation with Ansible, you're going to get so many playbooks out on Stack Overflow that you'll be able to copy something out of there and, and really get moving pretty quickly, right? And that's really the experience that we're trying to build for the community on the Z side as well, right? Um, so by having, you know, not only IBMers, but also our customers who are working with many other, you know, wider stacks of technologies, you know, helping to contribute to this repository, we're really hoping to really build out that foundation for, for our customers for what we can support here from an Ansible automation perspective. So, you know, if you are working, you know, with Ansible today, definitely, you know, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be happy to, um, you know, talk to you or, or, you know, if there's any concerns with your organization about contributing to open source, talk to you about that as well. But uh, we're definitely interested in having people contribute to our repository here. Okay, oh, oh, coming on almost at the end here, um, I do want to call out that we have a community on the IBM Z and Linux One community today to uh, stay up to date with our content. This is where I put out all the announcement blogs if new content is available in the community here. Um, but what I do want to call out here is kind of the best resource for many of our customers and where there's been a lot of interest is we do host a monthly community guild for Ansible. And what that community guild is, is basically that's the core set of customers who have been interested in Ansible in the last year or so. Um, and the, a lot of these customers are kind of our early adopters of a lot of our collections and are helping us kind of form, you know, what use cases we go after, what additional modules we should be adding to our collections, um, and kind of just helping give us feedback over time. Um, also, these customers present to each other on these calls to help each other understand where they're all at in their, you know, adoption of Ansible, what use cases they're looking at implementing within their sites. Um, and this, you know, has been a, you know, probably one of the brighter, you know, one of the, it's from a product manager's perspective, I'm very proud of what this community has really grown to in the last uh, year or so. And uh, some of the presentations that we've seen from customers on here to each other have really helped each other grow. Um, and, and their, you know, adoption and, and their roadmaps here with Ansible as well. So um, if you are interested in joining that Ansible Community Guild meeting, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm happy to get you in, invited to that. Um, but also once you, once you log into the Ansible for IBM Z topic group here on the community um, and you navigate over to the library tab on the bottom right here, um, in that library tab, you'll find the Ansible Community Guild folder where all the previous presentations and recordings are hosted. So um, if you do want to kind of catch up on any of that, you can also access all of that content there as well. And uh, there's a lot of good stuff hidden in there. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, did want to kind of link a lot of the different resources for the content that is available in the community today. So I think I've talked about a lot of this today already, but that top link right here um, Ansible Fest from Red Hat, that's kind of the big Ansible conference that happens um, once a year. Um, that just happened about four weeks ago now. And at that conference, Red Hat announced a bunch of changes coming to the Ansible automation platform in 2022. Um, and some of the terminology I use today is going to shift a little bit in 2022 with some of the new strategies that Red Hat announced. Um, so if you want to kind of stay up to date on what's changing in the Ansible automation platform space, that, that blog that I linked right there does a really good job summarizing all that and providing some topologies explaining some of those changes. So that's definitely a really good resource. Um, just going down the list, the, IBM, the Ansible for IBM Z collections, there's a hot link to our specific collections we're putting out into the community from IBM there. So you don't have to kind of filter out in, uh, in Ansible Galaxy yourself there. Um, we do post a bunch of videos on the Media Center for IBM here, and I have a couple more coming um, in the near future that I'll be posting. So there's a link to our, our uh, playlist there. Um, 
uh, a IT consulting firm, Triton, they uh, have posted a three-part blog series on how to get started with Ansible, how to write your playbooks for Z and you know a bunch of the different considerations specific to Z. Um, does a really, really good job. And we've had many customers call that they've found this actually and have been using this. Um, and this has helped them get started really, you know, really well. So just wanted to provide that to everyone in the community because you know, we're definitely appreciative of anyone in the community kind of building content to help others get started here. You know, it's what open source is all about. Um, and then lastly, uh, in Sono Terminal Talk podcast. So if you're familiar with Terminal Talk, uh, you know, run by Frank DiGilio and Jeff Bisti, a, a really great duo. And, uh, you know, I used to actually guest uh, host that podcast too. So you may, hear, you may have heard me a couple of times on there. Um, but they do a great job on that podcast. And they did have a bunch of the lead system programmers from Insono um, who may or may not have been one of those anonymous uh, service provider slides that I talked about before, um, who have been by far one of the most heavy users of Ansible today on the platform. And they talk a lot about their strategies and usage of Ansible today. Um, so really, really great Terminal Talk podcast to check out if you're interested in this Ansible space as well. And then lastly, um, you know, I've talked about this a couple of times. We do have a bunch of different um, Ansible for IBM Z sessions happening this week um, at, um, you know, at the GSC UK. So first of all, I want to call out that Brian Penyarchin section. So he is the lead architect across the Ansible for IBM Z you know, offering here at IBM. And he's going to be showing a bunch of great demos and kind of getting into a bit more from a technical perspective, um, where our customers are at and what we're focusing on from a development perspective, excuse me, in the near future here. So, uh, you know, Brian is my go-to guy for any technical questions and, and answers here that I ever, are, I ever need. Um, and uh, if you have any of those technical type of questions to bring, you know, uh, following this section, um, definitely, go to, definitely go to Brian's. That'll be a good one to check out. Um, on the ninth there, we have Stuart Francis. So he's one of the architects. He's the lead architect actually across the, the Kix collection. Um, the Kix collection has been incredible and seen a lot of great adoption as well. And they actually have some code patterns available in the marketplace today to get started with their collection in uh, simplifying application deployments with Kix. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming that's what Stuart's going to be showing a bunch of um, in his session. And I know he said that I, I, I talked to him a couple of days ago. He's going to have some good demos uh, to show there as well. So um, definitely check out that session for some demos for some Ansible automation with Kix. And then lastly, um, we have Bill Pereira, um, who <laughs> I've been working with Bill now. I'm, I've been at IBM for four and a half years. And uh, I've been working with Bill for about four of those years. Uh, I started with Zoe and me and Bill met with, uh, with Zoe over there. And uh, Bill is an incredible mainframe modernization guy on the platform. He's an absolute expert when it comes to uh, Visual Studio Code and working with ZOS with Visual Studio Code. Um, and I know that he'll have some incredible demos and he's shown me some incredible work he's done with Ansible there. I don't have really specifics about what he'll be covering, but if you're interested in the VS Code space and kind of um, there is a lot of ties between VS Code and Ansible already in the marketplace. And he's been building a lot of additional plugins kind of for some of the Z-specific content that we have available. So um, he always shows some great content. I definitely suggest anyone interested in this space to check out his session as well. Um, but for the most part, that wraps up the content that I had available today to present them. So, you know, I'll definitely take some questions, but please submit your session feedback. You know, definitely helps me tailor my session to be more accurate, you know, in the future and anything that you guys were hoping I would share, you know, to definitely add some of that content in the future here. Um, and uh, I guess also become a member of the GSC UK. Uh, this was a, a nice conference to be a part of, and I appreciate them for welcoming me today for my first GSC UK, and I hope to be invited back in the future as well. Um, but yeah, I'll, you know, thank you guys for having me today. Thanks for your attendance. And uh, if there are any questions, I'll take those in, in, uh, in chat now. But um, also feel free to reach out to me via email or on LinkedIn. Um, following me on LinkedIn is probably the best way to stay up to date with all the different content that we have coming out from our offering here and in, in this Ansible for IBM Z space. Uh, I post there pretty regularly about this type of stuff. So uh, feel free to reach out to me via email or LinkedIn with any additional questions following this session either. But thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. Um, we do have a question. Um, the question is, any thoughts on an IBM ZOS DB2 collection? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I think Brian may have sent some content about that, but 
Um, so we do have sample playbooks that are available today in the repository for DB2. Um, and if they're not available today, I know that they'll be being released very soon. So it looks like they were released to the master branch based off of the link that uh, that Bryant had shared there. So playbook wise, we do have stuff coming now from a collection perspective. Um, you know, I think Brian kind of explained that some of those modules in the ZOS core collection do work against DB2. Um, I can't identify at this time if we're going to have a dedicated collection for DB2 yet. Um, there's uh, discussions happening there, but uh, I, I can't speak towards if we're committing to, to work in that space at this very time. Um, hopefully at the next GSC UK, I'll have more to share there. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, guys, any other question, please feel free to enter them in the uh, chat box. If not, then Dan, thank you very much for an excellent presentation um, and for taking the time. And thanks everyone for joining this um, presentation. Thank you. I think we can wrap this up, Dan. Great. Thank you very much again. Sounds good. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Cheers, guys. All right.